I'm live. Okay, hello. Uh, hello everyone, how are you? Uh, I'm glad that some people could show up today. Thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, I am Professor Mehmet Kuchikazar. I am the chair of Hispanic Heritage Month Committee. Uh, we are, uh, this is one more of our events this for this year's uh, uh, celebrations. Um, and we've had a, very, a bunch of uh, events that are very informative, insightful, as well as entertaining. And today uh, we have a, uh, a special event uh, Sinue Padilla, his full name Sinue Padilla Sunsa, was a musical artist, uh, educator, luthier. Luthier is an instrument maker uh, for those who are unaware. Um, will provide a historical analysis of how musical elements from the various parts of West Africa and Andalusia, southern Spain, fuse with the music of Native American populations and evolution that is recognizable in today's musical genres of Latin America. Uh, so, Sinue Padilla, I'll let you take the floor. Thank you. Thank you, How are you, everybody? Uh, so yeah, uh, Latin American music, uh, it's a big uh, concept. But to understand what happened in Latin American culture and music, we have to first go to the roots uh, to understand how it's made and, and why uh, Latin American culture is so rich. And one of the main reasons is because every root that uh, blends in, uh, through the colony and today in Latin American culture, every culture is so rich by, by themselves. I'm going to talk first the original uh, people from this continent, the American cultures, the indigenous Native Americans. Uh, sometimes they say Indians, well, we. We already know that India is in another continent. Uh, Christopher Columbus, he thought he arrived to India, but uh, they are not Indians, we are not Indians. Every culture has a name. And uh, so Latin America has a lot of different uh, civilizations already before the, uh, before the colony. Uh, we can mention uh, one of the most important as the Incas in Southern America, or Aymaras, or uh, Guaranis in part of Southern America also. And uh, Central America, we can say the Mayan civilization that were already developed a lot of the calendar and had a an university, and also the Aztecs, the Olmecs. And we can do a really big list. I came from Mexico, so I have more information about Mexico. And in Mexico today, we have 69 uh, languages still alive, like Native American languages. Uh, you can imagine how many languages we had <coughs> high 500 years ago. So many different, uh, even uh, I know it's delicate to talk about the concept of races, uh, but it says that it has different Native American races. Now, uh, they didn't understand each other, uh, totally different um, ways to understand life. This is the first route and it's already pretty diverse. And, and when the Spanish colony starts in Latin America, in that ships uh, came different cultures. We don't say just like Spaniards or Espanoles. Well, that is a lot of things also to say. And as the continent is pretty diverse, also the, the cultures that arrived on these ships, they were really diverse. And I'm going to talk first about the West African route that arrived to the continent. We own a lot, not just because the music in all the world has, in certain way, has a route going to West Africa. And I, I say West Africa, even West Africa is pretty diverse and kind of ambiguous. But if I say just Africa, it's even more ambiguous. Like Africa is the second most populated continent in, in the world. And it's pretty, the, the extension is, is pretty big. And uh, so even more cultures over there in Africa. So West Africa, who, who we say that, that is the, the influence, the cultures, that we can today still recognize in Latin American uh, music. Well, the most important is Congo. 
uh, Yoruba, and Bantu. We have more, a lot more. But uh, in Latin American music, you can you can recognize these three: Congo from Congo, uh, Yoruba from Nigeria, and also Bantu. That in, uh, when start when the colony starts five centuries ago, uh, most of the Bantu people came from Angola, and uh, it's really important uh, to the develop of the colony. So music is another way to read the story and what a uh, community or a society uh, leaves the influences, what they have, what they don't. And uh, in all of them, you can find this West African root. In Mexico, that even today, many people uh, didn't knew that we have a really strong Afro-Mexican root and all the continent in a certain way it has our music, our food, and uh, even names of places in Latin America, it came from this West African root. Just in the 17th century in Mexico, more people speak Congo than Spanish because we have more uh, African, West African population in Mexico than Spaniards. And today is everything pretty mixed, and that is one of the secrets of why uh, Latin American food and music and culture is so rich is because all these roots that we are talking about they mix each other and and now let's talk about the third and another root that is really important and okay Spanish what happened with Spanish or Spaniards that that is a really big uh, also like question mark you say Spanish what what who even if it's a really small country, it has a lot of different cultures. Today, they have different languages, and some of them, they didn't, uh, they didn't feel the identity as Spaniards or Espanoles, like Catalanes. In Catalonia, there is the Northeast, or Gallegos, that is the Northwest, or Vascos, you know, that is, Vascos is in also Northeast and part of France, France. And uh, so they have different languages, even in, in, in Spain. But in that age, when Spanish colony starts in Latin America, in these ships came three really important uh, routes as Spaniards. And we are talking about the Moriscos, that is the Arab influence. We know all the Iberic Peninsula, it was an Arab kingdom by eight centuries and that was really important in, in the development of the arts and culture not just in Spain, in all the world and uh, so in that ships came a lot of these uh, Arab people, descendants that uh, that they didn't want to convert or they were uh, persecuted now. Uh, when, when the Catholic kings, they make this alliance and they get married and so they expose the last Arab kingdom that was Granada. So in that moment, uh, the Catholic kings, they, don't, they didn't permit the free cult. When the eight centuries that starts in, in uh, 7th century uh, starts the Arab occupation of Iberic Peninsula and uh, they permit the free cult they, they also the Rome the Roman uh, Empire they permit the free cult and that was like many different uh, empires permit that but the Catholics don't so they start uh, this uh, persecution of uh, morenos, that this word that we use a lot in Latin America, moreno, that means that your skin is darker. It came from Moruno, and Moruno came from Morocco. So that was the way they say to the to the, they they start the persecution of morenos, and they have to convert and uh, re renounce. I'm gonna need Mehmet if if so if I need some translation, do you help me out? <laughs> Yeah, they, they, they have to convert to the Catholic uh, religion. They do it sometimes like uh, 
but on the ground they still uh, believe in, in the Islam. And uh, same with the Jews, of course, right? Uh, it, the, the Inquisition was of Jews who supposedly had converted, but still, uh, the, the, still the Catholics they, accused them of still practicing their Jewish religion secretly. Exactly, and this is the other route that we we want to talk about. So we are talking the Moriscos. That's the way we say the, los Moros, the, the Arab influence that arise in that ships because, uh, like today, like people that emigrate. Uh, mostly they are looking for a better way to live and that's our story of all of us if we are right here in, in New York and you are not a Lenape or Maspet or some related with some Native American culture so we came from another place and that's fine that's actually that make a really rich culture when we when we learn from each other and we, when we put our traditions and on the table and so that's important to know that, like, we, everybody, we are doing this per all our story, like, immigrating to one place to other. And who immigrates first, who has the necessity to change, to, to have a better life? So the Arabs in that moment has to go, like, to the first American dream. That was the American dream 500 years ago, go to America, right? And America is a continent, so they, they, they came in that moment to, to the New Spain, to Southern America. And, uh, and also, as uh, Dr. Mem says, uh, and it's really important, this uh, Sephardi, Sephardi route, the Sephardi route it came uh, and they were already the slaves in, in Spain and, uh, and we can recognize a lot of that melodies in, in our music and our culture and many songs, many, many elements from Sephardi uh, culture. So we talked uh, Arab, Sephardi, and also we will talk about gypsies. That is another really important. And the, the gypsies also is a really big family that comprised many countries and many centuries. So uh, the gypsies that arise first, they were, uh, they came from North India, that region today belongs to Pakistan, and they walk all the way because they don't want to be slaves or they don't want to be a Mongolian Empire, so they walk all the way to Spain. It's a 400 walking, so uh, uh, there are many versions of this, but there are a lot of documents. When they arrive to Spain, Spain needs slaves. So, uh, because they passed to being the poorest country and they have to reconstruct a new country when the last Arab kingdom fell, fall. and uh, so they need people to work, to make more ships and to go and colonize before the, before the neighbors. And uh, so the first documents arrive in uh, that was the same moment when the gypsies arrived to Spain. And they meet in, as slaves in the mines. That's important uh, fact. In the mines in Huelva, that is uh, southern Spain. Actually, the flamenco was born in that mines. And the flamenco music, it's like the uh, el primo mayor, it's like the cousin. How you say that? The biggest, big cousin, the older cousin, the, the older cousin. cousin. Yeah, it's like the older, older cousin, but influence each other. Some people say like, hey, in the music and culture, we have the flamenco root, and that's wrong because the flamenco start developing at the same time, and they influence each other, and and it's actually almost the same age. So um, we share a lot in in Latin American music and the flamenco. And they are still influence each, uh, influencing each other. I'm gonna give you some examples uh, as soon as we finish this context. So we talk uh, from Spanish root, los españoles. Who were that? Who who was the españoles? Well, uh, moriscos, sephardis, and gypsies. So they start mixing in the mines in Huelva, and they do the same, like, let's go to the American dream, because I don't, I, 
I don't walk 400 years from my place in North India to arrive here and be a slave, right? So many of them, they go to Cadiz in southern Spain and go to the ships and came to America, came to Latin America. Uh, just, uh, uh, I just want to clarify something. When you say Sephardi, uh, Sephardic, you mean people, uh, Jews from Spain, that's technically what it is. Just Sephardic. to clarify for our audience in case they don't know. Uh, Jews from Spain. Gypsies is a common term, uh, but I'm not sure if they still go by that term or do they go by Roma? Or Roma, Roma yeah, that's an, an excellent uh, commentary, comment, because uh, that name, Gypsy, actually came because, as we said before, they start walking from or in North India and uh, they walk Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, and they start walking, walking Kazakhstan. And uh, difficult moments, in any country says like welcome, and they arrive to Egypt, and all that part was uh, still um, Arab kingdom, and they go to Europe from Egypt to Europe, and they they go to Turkey and to Czech Republic. So in Turkey, they start saying Egyptians because they came from Egypt, but that was actually via Egypt, because in Egypt they, they start going to Europe, and in Europe they start knowing these people like uh, Egyptians uh, from Egypt, and in Spanish, Egyptanos, we say Gitanos, Egyptanos. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's true, many of the uh, Egypt, uh, gypsies today they don't they don't feel identity with that name. Some of them they say Rom, uh, Pom, Rom. They, that is the family that they came from. They split in three uh, groups. One group stayed there in Czech Republic, Lithuania, uh, Bosnia, <laughs> and they are still there. And the, the music is really related with. Uh, music in Latin America, we can still feel it. They are still doing like interchange. Like I don't know if you know that like, Goran Gregovic, you can find out uh, how uh, this Balkanic music it's related with uh, North Mexico music, like the bandas, right? And uh, the second group go to Italy and Balkanics, and the third group arrives to. Uh, French and Spanish, Spain, Spain, and that's this third route is, uh, we have more relation. But there's these three groups; they are related. They came from the same place, and uh, it's beautiful how we are talking about a lot of cultures right now. I know our mind has the map like what the way they walk from here to here, but it's beautiful. I sometimes we use the map, but we know the map. We know where India is, we know where how they can walk to Europe, and we know how from, uh, from Turkey and Czech Republic they can go to Spain, and we know how from Spain they can arrive to the Caribbean, right? So uh, let's follow that map. And there is, there is a, there, there are some examples that, that I, I want to talk to you, but first the, I want to know if you have comment or question when I, I, I can't hear the questions over there. I, I have a question. Uh, of course, uh, when we talk about, of course, the Roma or, or you know, commonly known as, the, as gypsies, uh, in their history, uh, that richness of music was also with the trouble, the troubadours, right? The, 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 the group of traveling musicians, right, in India. Um, they were also that, the troubadours were part of the Roma culture, were they not? Yes. And it, that is also an, another great comment uh, because that was a culture that lives like nomads, like nomads, yeah. nomads. And uh, so these trovadores, always the trovador is like portable, you know. And uh, it has also certain. I, I just, I just remember when I was studying this uh, story in, in Spain, they were some measures, some compasses. Uh, that came from the from the las carretas, I say like, like the horses, all oh, the wagons, the horse-drawn wagons, yeah, the wagons, 
and the, las carretas they didn't have like perfect uh, circles, right? So and they go miles and miles and miles and thousands of miles and that. So they use it as the as the percussion, and they use the voices even today. The flamenco that that we know today that is really related with with uh, roms or gypsies, and uh, it has these kind of measures, and it has this instrumentation that is just the guitar and palmas and a lot of stories and voices, and uh, so now they have a lot of influence from Latin America that arrives and, and you can see it in, in the harmonies and the melodies and, and the new rhythms that they are, uh, that the flamenco adopts. And many of that rhythms, they were uh, made in, in Latin America with elements from these three important roots that we talk. The Spanish that already have some roots inside, uh, the West African that it has already different roots inside, and also the indigenous that it also has many roots inside. So all these melting through five centuries make our Latin American culture so rich. And this Latin American culture actually influenced the world also in, in many ways. And uh, so if, if you want, let's see that, how that sounds. Ways, yeah, you want? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> okay, so right now I, I, I remember I like to talk this example with, uh, with an instrument. I ring a guitar because it's pretty easy to find guitar everywhere. But there is, there is this rhythm. Uh, and this, look, this story that I'm going to talk, uh, we were talking about flamenco. And one of the, m I, uh, I can say maybe the most famous flamenco guitar player is Paco de Lucia, right? And everybody knows like Paco de Lucia, and it's so important. Actually, actually he wasn't uh, gypsy, gitanos, uh, how they call themselves in, in Spain. He was mixed, and uh, he started making some new additions and some fusions in the 70s uh, in Spain and in the flamenco music. And he decided to put some percussionists. And the percussion in the flamenco traditionally is the zapateado, is how they they do the percussion with feet and also clapping la palma. And also on the table, yeah, like playing the percussion on the table, and maybe on a cane. That, all that was the, the percussion in the flamenco. But Paco de Lucia, he started uh, studying uh, Brazilian harmony, so he changed from. He started doing some. There is this per Brazilian percussionist, uh, is Ruben Dantas, that he started playing in the 70s with uh, Paco de Lucia. And they went on tour to Peru, but they started making a fusion, and Paco de Lucia started being famous, and they went on a tour to Peru. And in Peru, uh, in the Spanish Inquisition, I I'm sorry, more than 200 years before that. And even in Mexico, uh, the Spanish Inquisition says like, it's gonna be forbidden playing the West African drums. Even in Mexico, there are certain letters that the, the priests, they were complaining to the king in Spain, saying that everybody go to the fandangos, that they were these parties, but nobody go to church. And uh, so, they were asking the king to do something about it because all these pagan cultures, they were doing whatever they want and, and they want power and control. So the king said, okay, in New Spain, that Mexico changed the name to New Spain, 
and also in uh, Lima, uh, the Viceroy in Lima, Ciudad Virreinal, High State Virreinal. Viceroy? Vi Viceroy, which is the colonial uh, Viceroy. Governor. Yeah, the, La Ciudad Virreinal was Lima in Peru. Because they were like the one of the most important places that they have already civilizations uh, established. So they, they use that uh, because it already has a lot of commerce and, and routes uh, to do the important colonial cities in, like uh, Mexico City and also Lima in Peru. So the king says that it's going to be forbidden the West African draw. But you can't just say it's going to be forbidden. Nobody's going to play that. You can't pull the culture from inside the people. So in Peru, they start playing the boxes. And in Mexico, we start playing the drums, dancing on, on platforms. And these platforms, they start doing like different, uh, they start developing to, to be in a drum. The first foot drums in Mexico, they were uh, holes. On the, on the soil, on the ground, and they put some pans with water to tune it, to, to calibrate the sound, and they put the tables, and they danced, and, and they were drums. And that was forbidden, but when people, when, when the authority arrives, today, who is playing drums? No, that's a hole on the, on the, what? Why was it forbidden? It was forbidden because uh, they want to erase, erase the, the culture. Because uh, sometimes that was a religious, uh, religious music. Sometimes uh, they didn't adopt the the Catholic culture because they still had memory of who they came, where they came from. So if you erase that, uh, it's easier to control the, mm -hmm. the people. And it's also it was associated with like pre. Uh, Christian or pre-Catholic cultures, and uh, and they associate that that with being pagan by non, not, you know, a non uh, uh, somebody who doesn't believe in God essentially, and uh, believe in you know the Christian God, and so uh, they wanted to eliminate that. And of course, as you said, yeah, they, they didn't go. For, they were, they would rather go to the fandangos, which are a communal party, instead of going to church as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but. It, this, it didn't have, it, that wasn't a successful uh, route uh, because everything just changed. And pagan, actually pagan, I think that means people. Uh, but uh, they were really different ways to understand the world, like idiosyncrasies uh, and uh, the politics, it was that erased and control the information and try to unify to, to control. That's why that was forbidden in Mexico but in, and also in Peru. But I'm telling you this story because Paco de Lucia went to Peru in the 70s and people already played the boxes and that uh, and was born this new style to play the drums in boxes, el cajón peruano, that is an important instrument. Uh, and you can say that's just playing a box that can be born in whatever place. Yeah, but the way that they do it is so special, and that was the way that influenced all the world. So that was this family of uh, Afro-Peruvian music in, in, in Lima, that is the uh, Familia Santa Cruz. And they say to the percussionist, because Paco Lucia that was a celebrity, they went to see Paco Lucia, and they said, hey, we have a gift for you, like a box, but an amazing box. Like it's not a box; it looks like a box, but it's a musical instrument. Right. And and also the the construction gets certain way to to sounds better. Certain a lot of engineering and that like uh, the way to calibrate it, which kind of wood it sounds better, and uh, many uh, acoustic rules. So the box, you see, like, boom, sounds like boom. It's not any box, it's like a cajon. So, and, uh, and, and, and this, it's a really important point because it's all, we, when we think of like the musical, well, you know, Europe to the, the Americas, we often think about the influences from Europe to the Americas. But the, the cajon peruano is an, is an influence from the Americas that went back to Europe. It went back to Europe 
and now in the flamenco you go to Spain and, and it's like almost every uh, flamenco show it has the cajonero but I, wa I was studying in the conservatory flamenco in 20 years ago and I still find in certain celebrations that uh, I was researching I still uh, interview certain old guys in the flamenco like patriarchas and say no 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 that is not right. The only precaution is hand, clap, feet, and cane. And that thing they say mariconeria, like that is a respected way to say that, you know. But the young people adopted, and and today is almost everybody plays the cajon flamenco, and even more people know the the cajon flamenco than people that know the cajon peruano. It has more exposition. And, uh, but so Ruben Dantas, he was explaining that he was the, the percussionist that received that cajon. And, and actually he was Brazilian that lives in Madrid and, and he started playing with Paco Lucia. And Paco Lucia said that, yeah, I want some, Latin, some Latino in the band to put the flavor, right? And, uh, and he said, like, well, when I had that cajon in my hand, I never played before. I didn't know what to play. So he started playing a rhythm from his region in the northeast of Brazil that is called Bailao, that do this. And, and it sounds amazing with, with the... With the rumba that Paco de Lucia already played. Well, they said that sounds amazing, and it has a reason because it sounds amazing. And uh, so they come back to Spain with the cajon, so happy, and they start playing like that, and everybody love it. And not the not the conservatory, not the conservatorios de la música, los conservadores, <laughs> uh, but most of the people like it. And they start playing this uh, northeast Brazilian rhythm. Now they have like different ways to to play on a rumba. That that name of that rhythm is a rumba and rumba came from another rhythm also. And, uh, but if we study that rhythm, that rhythm actually arrives to Brazil and it wasn't from Brazil. Arrives from, with a Turkish drum that arrived to northeast of Brazil called Darbek. And they played this in the, in the music from Turkey. They say, it's one of many rhythms. And if we go deeper, where this uh, rhythm came from, actually it's from Egypt. It's a rhythm from Egypt that do this. And I think the rhythm is called baladi in Egyptian music. So Egypt is even uh, older than Europe, we know. So that rhythm goes around the, the, uh, the world. And music is like that. It's, we can read in music what happened with people and what happened with cultures, even thousands of years going back, just researching that, that just listening and obviously researching music. And say, Why I listen to this music that is, is exactly like other music? Well, it is a reason. It is a reason. And uh, I'd like to, to share that, uh, that uh, story. And, and actually, that story, Ruben, Dantas say to to me and some friends, and uh, he still lives. I think he still lives in Madrid. And uh, Paco Lucia passed away like <coughs> a few years ago. And uh, so yeah, this rhythm. So now, now I'm gonna talk another thing that is that we can recognize about this Spanish influence in Latin America. What we say uh, in, in in Spanish. If I talk in Spanish. Eh, los hispanos o los españoles they are different things we are hispanos that is the Spanish that the, the people that we speak Spanish but we are not from Spain and we live outside, outside Spain so we are Spanish Spanish heritage it came from that it's more like Latin American related Spaniards like españoles it came from from España 
many people in Spain, many cultures, they didn't feel as Spaniards, and also they didn't speak Spanish, they speak Castellano, many of them. So the language actually is not called Espanol, it's called Castellano, and they have different, they have Castellano, they have Catalan, they have Valenciano, they have Gallego, they have Euskera, they have different languages just there in Castilla is just one region in Spain, which became the dominant, how politically the dominant region, and therefore the language of that place became the, the exactly. language of what we call Spain today. Castilla, Castilla y León, and they were the kings that gave like, this alliance, right? To Okay, that, now I'm going to talk something about this melody that we use. And, and it's the, as we said before, when, when when starts this art kingdom in Iberic Peninsula, uh, everything starts developing different. And uh, it was born this uh, form of music called Cadencia Andaluza. Andalusia today is southern Spain, like from Madrid to the south. All, all this part of Spain is called Andalusia. And this the uh, Arab Kingdom in Iberic Peninsula was called Al Andalus. Today is Andalusia. And uh, Cadencia Andalusa is like the um, Andalusia Cadence. And it came from this melody. I want you to recognize this. Like. How is this sound like? concept we have to see how in music to to study music we split a little bit of the elements it has many elements but we split like melody harmony and rhythm and this is a melody melody uses one note harmonies harmonies use more than one it's more like families doing the same melody but with many like with a families of notes and the rhythm, we just we just talk about the rhythm, right? So when you we are talking about some this is some flamenco rhythm called tango. Yeah, like the tango in, in, in Rio de la Plata in Argentina and Uruguay actually came from the same name. This is tango andaluz. The other is tango, the, the tango argentino, or, or Rio Platense. We say Rio Platense because not everything was in Argentina. Actually, has a lot of uh, roots in Uruguay. Uh, so Rio Platense is because Rio de la Plata is, is exactly between uh, Argentina and Uruguay. And uh, so with tango, this tango. With this melody. Doing. I'm gonna play it with, without rhythm, just feel it. This. some examples from this on music. You have some questions? No, no, I'm good. Let's see some music here. So what happened with this Cadencia Andaluza? That even Bach started doing music. That went from, from this part of uh, Andalusia to all the world. And all Europe, uh, classical music, uh, started using that one. So I'm gonna put some. Where's my phone? Some examples. What happened in in Latin American music with that? I'm gonna I'm gonna put some examples. What happened that? 
that is in Mexico. I don't know if you can, can you recognize it? the state of Veracruz, southern Veracruz, in the Gulf of Mexico, and also the state of Oaxaca, Tabasco, and Chiapas. That region uh, melts all the roots we talk about. They were present in that region. And if we, make, if we analyze this music, we can find uh, elements from all the cultures we talked before. Like They are also present in Latin America. You want to put another example if we have time? Are we good? We have like six minutes. All right, so let's use it. Uh, look this example in Venezuela, in the piano. So this, music, well, this music is in part of Venezuela and part of Colombia. Remember that music and culture doesn't understand about borders or lines. They are the, we call machinations of, of culture. And you can, you can see how they are related because of music. That's one way to see it. Maybe the food, maybe the language. Uh, like Mexico and U.S., they have the Norteño music in Texas and North Mexico, and it's the line between, but that line wasn't there before, and the music is the same. And, and, and also here, between uh, Venezuela and Colombia, they play this music, Musica Llanera. It has the same roots. And here. This is an art. And 
And uh, what happened there? We have the more of these uh, Congo and Yoruba roots that is really syncopated. So instead of doing uh, any one, talking about more about the gypsy root, the latch drum, yeah. uh, but there are many of them. Yeah. And so that it's just that Southern Spain became this a place where all these cultures are, are meeting and then uh, styles of music are emerging there and then they're transported to the Americas and they become an integral part of the music throughout the Americas. That's, that's just, that's a fa that's a, uh, just fascinating. My question is also a little more about the indigenous influence. Uh, can you talk maybe just a minute or uh, about the indigenous yeah. influence? Yeah, the, the indigenous influence, uh, you can see it, yes, in the music, in the way, in the feeling to sing. They have, I'm gonna put you another right here, pretty fast, that you can see what happened with a more indigenous swing to the same. Uh, roots 
Eve, pues es also a mix with the same uh, cadencia andaluza. And also in the lyrics, like many myths, many uh, we, we can we can see how the cosmogony, cosmogony of the, of the Native American people is inside of the lyrics and also uh, the instruments, how they start constructing in a different way and certain melodies that mix with, the, 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 with that one, like, like a cumbia, that is an example also, uh, how it's pretty important still today. Uh, and it's still, uh, also, they have certain. Uh, traditional music in the continent that they the, they are seen in indigenous languages and they use the same. So it is present in Wicca in many different ways. Okay. Thank you again so much to do it. A uh, really fascinating talk. Um, I, I think uh, I have of course a lot more questions, but maybe we'll, we'll hold it for another time when we invite you back for uh, further analysis. Um, so uh, to close, I just want to uh, emphasize some of our uh, next events. And uh, Sinue, again, we never mentioned where you're from. You're from? From Mexico City. And how long have you been living in New York? Uh, 15, year. 15 years. 15 years? And you've been kind of all around you uh, studying music from different parts. You were in South America for a time, yeah. Brazil, Argentina. Uh, Mediterranean. Mediterranean, Spain as well, studying uh, at the Conservatory of Flamenco Music, so you have a long trajectory. And just briefly, can you mention some projects that you're doing so our audience might be interested yeah, in following Yeah, sure. Uh, we have this project called Harana Beat, Harana with J, that uh, we express all part of these roots and how these roots, they are still alive, even if it's traditional music, uh, how uh, that came to big cities and uh, it plants on the on the community and uh, now it's called urban folk urban folk uh, yeah urban folk and uh, so haranabi if you like it also we have many many examples of that music we don't have the time unfortunately uh, yeah but we can put it maybe in some description i can give you so yeah we can add that on we can certainly put it and in also YouTube. another important thing is the uh, i'm a haranero uh, from the song Harocho, the first example of music we, we saw. And uh, I'm involved with this uh, from most of my life. And uh, I'm collaborating with communities, Haranero communities, all around the different cities and around the world. That is some, part, some manifestation of culture that also it's uh, Spanish heritage and uses all the roots that we talk. And so in that is, if you want to check it out, that also we can put some some Harajo descriptions. Mehmet, uh, Dr. Mehmet, is <laughs> part of that community here in New York, the important part. Uh, yeah, Sinue was my teacher early on, so I, I was introduced to music uh, through Sinue, and, and he has taught me a lot about the music, and I play music because of Sinue taught me to, to play, oh. so yeah. You have to check it out, he's amazing. <laughs> he plays many different instruments. Uh, anyway, uh, but that's a good segue into our last event that I want to let you know. Uh, traditional Mexican music and dance with Radio Jarocho on Tuesday. Nice. They're performing uh, for us and they're bringing to us the tradition of Son Jarocho music uh, uh, to our campus on Tuesday, uh, October 25th, 12.30, in the Washington Quad, outdoors, hopefully weather permitting. If not, uh, then we'll be inside in the, in the dining hall in the Duchess uh, uh, cafeteria. And so they're going to give us a little bit of a zapateado or step dancing lesson in the beginning and then they're going to have uh, perform uh, and then hopefully those of you who are there and try out the dancing might during the concert try to actually show us some of those steps. So we're hoping that people will, uh, will participate and, and not be shy of course. Uh, likely I will be doing that, okay? Uh, I'll probably do a little zapateado for the audience. Um, Okay, I don't make fun of me, but I will. Um, all right, so that's our last event to close our, our wonderful uh, year, uh, wonderful uh, period of events that we've had since mid-September uh, for Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, so please, please, I hope to see you at the concert on Tuesday, uh, 12.30, 1.45 in the Washington Quad. Uh, it'll be fun. 
It'll be entertaining, um, and it'll be you can participate. So please be there if you can. Um, and again, thank you so much to Sidwe Padi and Sunsa. Also, you. thank you to our audience. Uh, Ella, thank you. <laughs> uh, also, thank you, Patrick Huber. Thank you, Christian, uh, for the media work that you guys are doing uh, for this. Uh, obviously, uh, extremely important. Uh, so thank you uh, for helping us to share uh, the talk with everybody and uh, sharing our events with everybody, not only with people of our campus, but everyone out, outside of our campus as well. Uh, so again, I'm Bemid Kuchikosar, Professor of Behavioral Sciences, but the Chair of Hispanic Heritage. And thank you, and we hope to see you next time.